an entrepreneur, you have to think of like where you can meet the most needs for the most people. And the more needs you meet uh, for more people, the more money you're going to make as a result. Hello and welcome to Pillars of Wealth Creation, where we talk about creating financial success with a special focus on business and real estate. I'm your host, Todd Dexheimer. Now, let's get to it. Hello, welcome back to Pillars of Wealth Creation. I'm your host, Todd Dexheimer. With me as always on these Wednesdays, we got Matt Jones. Matt, how are you doing today? I'm doing excellent. How about you, Todd? Well, I'm doing good. Just uh, just got back from a trip to Memphis, Tennessee. We've got several projects there. Um, real quick trip. Uh, like to just make a presence at these properties. We've got big renovations going on, Matt. So we've, we're we doing, um, you know, I think it's, I think we're spending like, close to 20,000 a unit on interior renovations, um, big, you know, full, full new kitchens and baths and the, the whole works. And so, you know, there's a lot, there's a lot going on. Want to make sure that things are going right. We've got some potential issues with the contractor. I should say potential. We've got some issues with the contractor. I want to make sure we went through, talked about, it's better being there face to face than trying to be on the phone and talking about it. Um, Kind of one of those meetings uh, yesterday where it was, you know, quit the BS. Let's cut to the chase. Stop telling me things that, or stop hiding things from me, essentially. And I don't, they weren't necessarily maliciously hiding things. They're just, you know, not telling me information I don't want to hear. And I'm like, that's that's not the communication I want. I want you to tell me what's going on with the property, be open and honest and tell me the real timelines, the real issues you guys are having and, and why it's taking so long. That's what my investors expect from me. That's what I expect from my property management company, from my contractors, you know, tell me what's going on, what problems we have at hand and what are you doing? What are the solutions to solve those problems? And if you don't know the solutions, let's talk about them. Let's figure it out together. That's the only way we're going to have a successful project. And it's just something that they were just kind of trying to, you know, just, just downplay some of the issues going on. And, and the issues aren't, the worst in the world necessarily, but uh, things that I think we can do better on and we can work through. And so it's important for me as uh, that's kind of one of the roles that I play in our company is construction management uh, from afar. So it's important for me to get down there, get on site. Uh, I told you before the call, I got on a flight at 9, 9, 10 yesterday morning and got back uh to see the kids at by nine o'clock in the evening so just quick in quick out but really valuable to get there get on site really just just hammer these contractors hammer my property management company and i feel like more than just hammering them right because that that does nobody any good uh if we don't have a solution so figuring out what are this what's the solution moving forward and and how are we going to do things to improve to be able to get this project done and to be able to do a quality job and provide a great place for people to live yeah i think a, a common human reaction to problems is to uh, ignore them and hope they go away but uh, that rarely works so i'm glad you're being more proactive and actually being solution driven uh, with these issues yeah yeah that you're right i mean that's nobody wants to have a problem nobody wants to disappoint people, you know, so that's the solution. A lot of times is let's ignore this problem. Hopefully it goes away and these guys won't know any different. And, and so, but, but that's causing more issues. So that's the problem is you're not communicating well with us. You're, you're telling us what we want to hear, but you're not telling us the truth. Cause if you're telling us what we want to hear that things would be different. Right, the project would be further along. Um, the project, you know, way further along. I mean, that's that's the main issue is is that they're just not nearly as far along as what they should be. And the other, you know, we had some cabinet issues, and it's like you guys just are unorganized. That's why there's cabinet issues. It's not that we need to order new cabinets. You're telling me we need to order new cabinets, but I went through these units and I found out that we've got cabinets misplaced all over the place. You know. It's just that you're not organized. That's what is going on. That's why when you're installing cabinets 
not to plans. And so you're messing things up. Mm. So, so just some, you know, just things that, you know, look, I mean, if you're going to take on whether it's a duplex or single family or a hundred unit or a 500 unit complex, you're going to have to make sure that the construction's going well. Likely you've got renovations that are happening of some sort, right? Um, whether, whether even if it's a duplex and it's turnkey, eventually roof's going to have to get replaced. Furnace is going to have to, cabinets are going to have to uh, get, get uh, replaced, whatever it might be. Eventually things are going to have to get done. And so you're going to have to manage construction projects. Uh, you're going to have to manage property management companies. And so, or, or maybe you're managing on your own, you're still going to have to manage the people that are going to the property and doing the work, unless you're the one doing everything, which you shouldn't be. Uh, but unless you're the one doing everything, you're going to have to manage people. You have to, you know, sometimes conversations are tough, but you're going to have to do it. Yep. Makes sense. However, that actually is not what we're talking about today. Uh, oh, we have, not? Yeah, no other sidetrack. That's okay, though. It's uh, okay. What we're actually talking about is the state of the market and what we think uh, the projections can be in the market in the you know coming years as well. Yeah, um, man. So this is a big topic, um, certainly, and and there's a lot that we could cover, but we're just going to cover a couple things, Matt. So first of all, everybody kind of knows what's going on. You know, it's 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 July twenty. Uh, 2022. Um, you know this. Be, this episode has is being recorded, but the day that this episode releases, there's probably going to be a uh, indication or or an announcement of where interest rates are going. The Fed, the new Fed rate, either maybe it's a day or two before this uh, episode, or it's a day after this episode uh, airs. But we're going to know. Did the Fed raise uh, rates by? Uh, half a point by three quarter by a full point, we're going to know that. So uh, we know right now interest rates are rising. We've got inflation that's out of control. It was over 9% last um, announcement. And so, and it's likely even higher than that. So we got inflation out of control, interest rates going up. We've got just a totally different environment than we had uh, two years ago, three, three years ago. You know, it's just, it's just completely different. Um, but I think the bigger concern uh, to me than inflation, than um, than interest rates rising, is the demographics changing. And and so what I mean by that is the baby boomer generation is aging. I think that's great for you know senior housing, but it's uh, concerning for the regular housing industry. It's concerning for the workforce industry. And so that's something that I think there's a lot of opportunity that is going to be in, ahead of us due to that. But there's also a lot of um, downfalls because of it. And so you need to position yourself to be able to capitalize on the opportunities and make sure you're not getting left in the dust. And that's every time changes happen, that's what happens, right? Think about, you know, Blockbuster, uh, Netflix, and some of these other online streaming businesses came about and Blockbuster didn't make any changes. Blockbuster should have been positioned to have online streaming, right? They should have been positioned to be, you shouldn't hear the, the name Netflix, you should be hearing the name Blockbuster. I've got my Blockbuster account not my Netflix account. But Blockbuster didn't make that pivot. They, they had their head in the sand and they didn't change anything and eventually they're, they're gone. That The same thing's going to happen uh, over and over through history. And I think one of the biggest changes that we're seeing or we're going to be seeing is this baby boomer generation and what's happening with them. Yep. And as a side note, uh, did you know Blockbuster had the opportunity to buy Netflix at one point but declined? Yeah. Uh, again, stupid, you know, yep. it, it, you know, head in the sand. Right. And there's going to be so many people, they're going to have their head in, their sand, in the sand and they're going to say, it's not changing. It's not changing. It's not changing. And we're going to stay the course. Look at how much money we're making. Why would we change? Right. That's great. You're making money right now, but look, things are 
going to change and they're going to continue to change. And so you've got to look at who are you serving? So in the, in the immediate, you know, look, we've got this baby boomer generation. We've got the millennial generation. Those are two big generations to serve right now. So in the immediate, like right now, you should be serving both of those generations and you should be looking at what their needs are, what their wants are, what, what they really want. And, it, and look, if you're in the housing industry, what do they want to live in? What are they actually asking you for? Are you serving their needs? Uh, I think that is what's going to make you the most amount of money. So there's two I think big things in both those demographics, and they're they're both different. So there's definitely, uh, Matt, a lot of intricacies within this, and and you can serve them in different ways. But millennial generation, there's two big missing needs right now. Okay, uh, two, I shouldn't say necessarily missing. The one is actually probably being served pretty well. Uh, that's luxury. That's high end. These millennials want a lot of technology, want access to a lot of the the cool things, right? The the uh, think of the the axe throwing, the whatever they want to they want to have experiences to be around. And so, if you can create a, a community with experiences, like we're putting cornhole in our properties, we're we're doing just a little extra things to try to attract that millennial type generation. So technology experiences, uh, if you get in luxuries, if you can have those in your property, you're going to get high rents. You're going to attract a lot of that generation into your property. Cool stuff, right? Um, and I don't think that's changing. The other side of that coin is you've got a lot of millennials that cannot afford the rent that's being charged right now. And so affordable rent is a huge need right now. And that is a big underserved part of the population. That is a difficult thing to tackle because there's not enough money in it, quite frankly, to serve that. And what's the answer? The only answer is subsidies, which I'm not a huge fan of, but that's the only answer in my opinion. I don't know what the other answer is. I mean, certainly there's companies working on, you know, modular building and different types of, uh, of how we can build better. But uh, right now, that's not an answer. At least that's not the only answer, right? That might be a part of the answer. But, um, but that's the problem is I can't, it, Matt, if I go and buy an apartment building from you, you're not going to just sell it to me for less because I'm going to turn it into affordable housing. You're yeah. going to get the maximum dollar amount, right? I mean, yeah. I mean, uh, uh, you know, I, I can see like, Oh, Hey, you have a good mission, but I'm in this to, it's a business. I have to treat it like a business. Uh, you know, I, I agree with you with the subsidies and they can come in many forms, whether tax incentives or uh, you know, rent help, things like that. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, that those are, those are the two, I think biggest needs uh, probably for quite frankly, even for that's millennials, but I would say close that was baby boomers as well. Baby boomers are really getting attracted or are attracted to experiences too. maybe slightly different experiences than the millennial generation, uh, but they're attracted to experiences. I'm surprised how many baby boomers I talk to want to be part of a 55 plus community and, and they, they just want that community that doesn't have kids and stuff like that. So they still want the amenities. They don't necessarily need some of the, you know, they don't need the pickleball core, the, the, um, the cornhole. Uh, they don't need some of that stuff, but they st certainly want some of the amenities and some of the experiences, the availability to have some of that thing. But if you're serving a 55 plus generation, again, you've got to dig in. What do they need? That 55 plus generation is, is, massive. Uh, but that's short term because who's after them. So you have to also if you're a if you're a buyer or planning on building in that 55 plus, I would say go after it right now, but understand that your time what your timeline is, right? Where where's the baby boomer generation right now? Where's that population? Where's it going to be in 10 years, in 15 years, 20 years? So you can plan for 
what you're going to do. Are you going to convert it to market rate? Are you going to sell it to somebody else prior to it starting its decline? You know, what are you going to do with that, uh, with that housing? So I think definitely uh, there's opportunities out there for serving both the millennials and the baby boomers, but, um, you just got to understand what's happening. Exactly. I think as an entrepreneur, you have to think of like where you can meet the most needs for the most people. And the more needs you meet uh, for more people, the more money you're going to make as a result. I think right now, Matt, it's it comes down more than ever to location, 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 and quality of product. Here's, here's where my thoughts are. This baby boomer generation. We've talked about it when we, when I talk about assisted living and how excited we are about assisted living, but also affects market rate housing. Market rate housing is just your regular day, day to day, everybody, you know, apartment building, right? It affects it because here's what's happening. There's 300,000 baby boomers turning 80 or they're not actually baby boomers uh, right now. There's 300,000 people turning 80 in 2022. There's a million people, over a million people expected to turn 80, and those are baby boomers, by 2027, okay? That's a huge difference. And that's going to continue for a, well over a decade, for like 20 years. Okay, well, what's going to happen there? Those people are aging. They can no longer work. Right, so we've got a big retiring workforce. It's already happening. We're already seeing labor shortages. This is not going to change. It's going to get worse with labor shortages because there's more people exiting the market than there are entering the market. What's happening with housing? Well, right now we're fine, but as that baby boomer hits that 80 year mark, statistics show that the vast majority of them, 60%, will need some sort of assistance. And out of that 60%, the majority will go into an assisted living or a memory care or maybe even an independent living with some sort of you know care, but they'll go into other housing. And so what's that mean? They're going to sell their house. And what's that mean for the housing industry? We've got a flood of single family houses that will be hitting the market in the next over the next, you know, decade plus. So be thinking about that. Don't run away from it, but be thinking about how can I best capitalize on that opportunity? It's an opportunity. Okay? It's definitely something to be concerned about. It's definitely something to be thinking about, but it's an opportunity. There will be opportunity in how you can capitalize on that market and what it's going to look like. Where are we going to be? Is there going to be more housing stock than people buying that housing? And so how can you capitalize on that event? Yeah, exactly. That makes sense. Yeah. It, it, I think uh, my biggest concern is what's happening in the labor force and can we get ahead of it right now we're behind it and and so i'm not smart enough to figure out the technology needed to alleviate the issue but we have a big drop in workforce that's going to be happening like i said over the next 10 15 years okay People that turn, you know, 65 to 70 are retiring and, and that's going to continue. And so how are we going to, how are we going to fill that gap? I think this provides big opportunity for people who are industries that are irreplaceable or very, very hard to replace. I think it provides big opportunity for those people who are in the industries where it's easy to replace them with technology. Their opportunity is they go out and figure out how to find a job or how to start a business that's going to still be around, right? The ones that are like Blockbuster, that don't change, that say, hey, I'm in the service industry, I'm doing well, 
I'm not going to change anything I'm doing. I'm not going to go get educated. They're going to be the ones that are left behind. You know, I think uh, factory workers that are working on assembly line, do we need them? Can technology replace them? Somebody who's working at a restaurant, do we need them? Can technology replace them? You know, uh, those are just two examples, right? There's, there's hundreds of examples out there. But look at your job, look at your business, and is it replaceable? And if it is, how can you be involved in the change that's being made, right? Going to a live video store, is that replaceable? Yes. Okay, how can Blockbuster be involved in that change, right? I, I was listening to um, the book, uh, the CEO of, of Disney or the former CEO of Disney. And they talked about all the changes that they have made through the years to continue to grow and thrive. And it's amazing the, the adjustments that they've made throughout the years. They've been able to go through this crazy change in technology and times and yet come out on top, right? They're, Disney is a bigger company now than it's ever been. They've, they've got Disney Plus. They've got all kinds of stuff going on. They, they own so many, uh, I don't know, comp, uh, sub companies, you know, Marvel and Star Wars and all that kind of stuff. And it's amazing what they've been able to do throughout the years, but it's because they're looking at the changes coming and they're embracing them and they're not fearing them. And they're taking advantage of those changes to create a better company. And that's what you need to do. That's what you need to do if you're a multifamily owner, single family owner. If you're an entrepreneur, whatever you're doing, you've got to look at the changes and you've got to pivot. Yeah, sounds good. I mean, it's hard to do, certainly, uh, to like really analyze. So any advice for how people can figure out like what they need to do right now and in the coming years to uh, adapt? Yeah, I mean, look, right now, in today's market, you you can see what's going on. So you don't need to necessarily adapt today. Um, and I would, I, that's, that's probably even, even not the correct, uh, the correct advice, right? Cause there's still stuff happening to be able to start to pivot. Right. So look at what I think you always need to look at what the needs are right now. And you always need to have at least a five-year horizon. What are, what are the needs going to be? Right. And so how can I serve those needs? So one big part of what we have been doing is changing how, how we look at the properties we're buying. We're looking at properties we're buying. We're trying to buy properties in very well-located areas and areas that we think will continue to grow. And we're trying to make sure we add the amenities that currently are are desirable and we think are going to be desirable in the future trying to remodel with that in mind as well um and so you know do doing those things i think will help you as things continue to shift and, and change and um, just always be looking at how can i take advantage of the market that's coming right you don't have to look 50 years ahead 60 years ahead. That's just impossible. But can you look at what's coming in the next three years, in the next five years, up to the next, maybe up to up to 10 years? Beyond that, it's it's pretty impossible to understand. Even 10 years is really hard to understand, Matt. So what's going on in the next, you know, three years, five years? And if you're seeing a trend, look, Matt, if I bought a, uh, a A-class property, or created an A-class property. And I'm like, I can see the trend says nobody's going to want an A-class property, but they want them right now. I'm going to go ahead and sell that building, right? And I'm going to go buy the C-class property if that's what everybody wants, right? It's, it's okay to have it right now because that's what people want. But if that, if you see, if, if you're looking into the future and you're like, nobody wants this, nobody's going to want this. People are starting to say, eh, I don't like this anymore. Okay. Or who am I serving? Oh, look, I see this and I see this. I'm serving 
neither the high end nor the low end. I'm serving right in the middle and the middle continues to shrink, right? Okay, well then go away from the middle and go to the high or go to the low if it's growing, right? Go where the growth is happening. You know, one thing I can recommend to our listeners uh, to help with this, you know, envisioning the future is to read the book, Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. Mm. Yeah, it's a, it's a fantastic book. It's a timeless book. Um, you know, I'll, it's funny because it's such an old book, but it's got advice that just pertains to today um, still. And, and so, yeah, absolutely. And it, look, this, it's nothing to fear change is going to happen, right? Uh, we're in for a, I think, a massive amount of change over the next decade. I, I think it's going to be crazy in how much we change and, and need to adapt over the next 10 to, to in 15 years. Um, but I think if you looked back and you said, well, you know, I was born in 1982, <laughs> Look at the change that's happened from 1982 to today. That's a massive amount of change, Matt. It's just going to continue to accelerate, especially right now, especially with what's happening. And the other thing about looking too far ahead, Matt, is we don't know. We don't know what the government's going to end up doing to change things, how that's going to play out, how politics are going to play into this whole thing, how immigration is going to play into the whole thing, um, you know, uh, how technology is going to disrupt things. So even though you can plan for five years ahead, three years ahead, maybe up to 10 years ahead, you also have to be understanding and willing that you have to adjust quickly, right? You always have to be, it's not like, Matt, you can't just look out right now. I can't, I'm on this podcast right now telling you things that are coming up, right? We're sitting here talking about this. I can't go, okay, Matt, this episode was recorded in, in July of 2022, this is what's happening. This is what I'm planning for. And now I'm going to stick my head in the sand and I'm going to put, I'm going to get to work because I'm going to be wrong. Everything I say today is going to be somehow wrong. It, maybe it, I'm on the right track, but it's still not going to be exactly right. I got to be always constantly looking, right? I got to always be constantly thinking. Always adapting. Always right. Always making those small incremental changes to improve my business, to make sure I'm serving the people, right? It's all about service. You're only going to make as much money as, as who you serve, as what you serve. So it's all about service. So are we continuing to serve people the right way and for the future? Very good. All right. Anything else? No, I think that's it for today. All right, man. Well, you have a fantastic rest of the day. Make every day Saturday. Hey, you too. Hey, thanks so much for listening. I appreciate you being a loyal listener. Say, I would love to have you go on to our Facebook page and subscribe. Uh, give us a thumbs up. Go on to iTunes or wherever you listen and give us a rating and review. Don't forget to subscribe. But your rating and review just helps us push this out to more and more people and continue to grow our audience and hopefully positively affect a ton of people out there that really need this and, and want this. So uh, the other thing I've got for you is a free ebook on my website. So go on to VentureDProperties.com, VentureDProperties.com and download our free ebook uh, on real estate and on syndication. And I've got some data points in there, some really good stuff for you. So I'd love to have you take a look at that. It's free. I'm not expecting anything from it. Uh, and, and also look, if you want some help in multifamily, want some help learning, growing, getting your business off the ground, I would love to talk to you about what it would look like uh, to work with me potentially and see if that's a good fit. So you can go up to coachwithdex.com and check that out and uh, we can definitely have a, uh, a call. Thanks a lot for listening. You make it a fantastic rest of the day. I'll catch you on the next episode.